How do you react when someone mentions the word responsibility? A lot of people associate a negative connotation to it. It sort of carries a burden with it. Unfortunately, the word responsibility almost comes with blame. If I take responsibility of this, if something goes wrong, then I will have to take the blame. Blame leads to pain. And our brain seeks comfort and will choose pleasure over pain. So we rather avoid responsibility. The word responsibility, when broken down, is made of two words, response and ability. The ability to choose a response. It's the ability to respond rather than react. Given my ability, what will be my response? There is a choice involved. See it as an internal power rather than an external burden. You have the ability to respond however you want. You can choose a response and you can choose not to react. We can always make a better choice rather than simply reacting. There is no rule book out there that says anger has to be met with anger or insult with insult. These are conditioned responses we often react without thinking. A reaction is quick. A response comes more slowly. A reaction is when you say something without really thinking. It's based on beliefs and prejudices, usually accompanied with an emotion like anger. A response is made when you calmly take things into consideration. It's usually seen from your and the other person's perspective without triggered emotions. A reaction on some level comes from a defense mechanism. You might regret it later. A response is made usually seeing the long-term effects and mirrors your core values. A reaction typically provokes more reaction. A response can lead to discussion and even a resolution. A simple example of reaction versus response would be, say you get an email from an ill-informed workmate that triggers you instantly. You immediately hit back with an angry reply. Now the employee is angry because there is a chance that they genuinely didn't know the facts. This may lead to tension between these two parties because they feel insulted. Now in the same scenario, instead of immediately sending a reply, you take a walk, drink some water, and when the emotions have died down, think of a professional response filled with facts to inform this employee. This probably will lead to a resolution. A lot of us feel entitled to a great life without doing the work. Someone out there is responsible for our happiness and our success. There is only one person responsible for the quality of your life. You. If you want to be successful in any area of your life, you have to assume 100% responsibility. And that is a hard pill to swallow because we are conditioned to blame someone or something out there, the society, parents, boss, government. The real solution always lies within us. The blame game is massive in our society and because it's habitual, it perpetuates. The problem with blame is it generally doesn't fix anything and it takes the power away from you. If you want to create 100% of your life, then you have to assume 100% responsibility as well. You cannot totally control what happens to you, but you can certainly control how you respond to it. If you choose to take 100% responsibility, then you can create and change the situation. When you blame, you create a helpless situation for yourself. You feel you have to wait for others to change their response so that you can achieve anything. There is a huge difference between finding out what caused a problem and changing that rather than who caused it and blaming them. Blame is usually accompanied with chronic complaining. Chronic complaining is such a draining activity. There's a difference between constructive complaining that can create productive result and chronic complaining. Let me explain. Constructive complaining are complaints that lead to change. They're usually made to the right person that can rectify the problem and create a solution. For example, 
If the airlines has lost your luggage and their staff is unapologetic and negligent, then you do need to make a complaint to higher authorities. Chronic complaining is when there is a tendency to ruminate on problems and to focus on setbacks over progress. They usually complain to the person that can't really do anything about it. Chronic complainers aren't looking to solve anything, they simply want validation. For example, if you're having issues with someone at work, then going to your boss would be more beneficial than complaining to your partner at home. Chronic complaining is not only futile, but also puts you in a victim mode. The power is out there. You feel helpless. The more you indulge in it, it becomes habitual. A lot of complaining is influenced by others. We've seen our parents or family or the immediate environment around us do it. We sort of jump in just to get along. Sometimes a common complaint can bond two people who may have nothing in common. But just like a credit card, it will take more out of you than you realize. Happy people complain less. And when they do, they're likely to complain more mindfully, more strategically. They're interested in finding solutions rather than focusing on the problem. If you're going to complain, complain only in instances where you believe it will affect a real and positive change. It's okay to share your feelings when something has happened that affects you, but be mindful of who you're doing it with. First, can they empathize without adding to the negativity and even guide you towards a positive outcome? And second, that you don't get into the pattern of dwelling and ruminating. You cannot 100% control the outside environment. What you can have absolute control over is the way you respond. If you're not happy with the life you're creating, change your response. Change the way you think, change your behavior, create new productive patterns. We can get out of our conditioned reactions. We can create a new way to respond. Some daily practices that can help you respond intelligently rather than react instantly. Number one, pause. Take a deep breath. Remember, reaction happens in an instant when responding there is a gap. Pausing before you act is the very foundation of responding. Pause, take a deep breath, maybe have a glass of water. This takes your mind off your emotions while at the same time helps you see what is the best way to respond in the situation in order to create a positive outcome. Number two, move or exercise. When we resort to reacting rather than responding, it's usually because we have pent up negative energy. When we bottle up negative emotions on a regular basis, they eventually build up to the point where an explosion is bound to happen. That energy needs to be released. Movements like daily exercising or walking or running or dancing helps release pent up energy. Take a walk before you respond to that angry email. With a daily practice of some sort of movement, you will start to notice the difference between how your body feels while it's experiencing full physical tension and how it feels when that tension is no longer there. Eventually, this will help create awareness when your emotions are making your muscles tense and you can ease them instantly. Number three, setting intentions. Setting clear intentions in any area of your life really helps in responding in a positive, productive manner that works for you. To learn more about setting intentions, watch my video, Intention, Attention and Action, Mental Housekeeping 3. The link is on your screen. When you have clear intentions of your goals, then you wouldn't waste time in reacting and using your energy frivolously. For example, if you've decided to be healthy and eat more consciously, you may have some people that might mock your new choices or argue with facts that benefit their point of view. You can choose to react to them, argue and get angry, wasting your time and energy. Or if your intention is to create a sustainable healthy living, you could respond with a thought like, that's simply their opinion and I'm interested in learning about healthy foods, creating new habits and hanging out with more health conscious people that will encourage me in this journey. Instead of arguing with them, why don't I work towards my goals? When you start seeing the power in your ability to respond rather than react, then everything you say or do becomes aligned to your intention and future goals. Number four, meditate daily. The difference between reacting and responding 
is awareness. Knowing you're about to react in a way that's not productive and having the ability to stop yourself before you do. This is a skill and can be developed through daily meditation. The practice of daily meditation helps you become more skillful in creating a gap between stimulus and response. Instead of reacting with emotions, you start to see the situation from an overall perspective which helps form a productive response. I believe we are powerful creators, but we must learn to harness that power. We must practice the skills that make us a powerful creator. We are the ones creating our lives. Everything is a choice. Be kind to yourself and others. Please share your thoughts on response versus reaction in the comments below or any tips you may have. Please like, share and subscribe. It really helps a new channel like mine. Love to hear from you. Thank you and namaste. This is Nico on the moon.